Hey guys, it's Chris from Highland Guitars and you're watching another episode of From the Luthiers Workbench. In this episode, I'm gonna let you follow along as I build this really awesome mobile flip top tool stand. Now, if you're like me, space is a premium in your workshop and really the theme for my workshop is uh, mobility and portability. So what I've done is I have built a couple of these flip top tool stands in order to support my tools and to reduce the amount of space. And, and this way I can roll the, the stand out when I need to use it and then I can just flip it around depending on what tools I'm gonna use. Now for this stand, I used it to support on, on the top side here, uh, my oscillating spindle sander and my four by 36 inch bench top belt sander. And then down here below, I have a downdraft sanding box. Uh, in fact, I just posted a video a while back on how I built that sanding box, and if you're interested in how I did that, I'll, I'll post a link up here so you can check it out. But if you search YouTube or the internet for information on how to build flip-top tool stands, you're gonna find a ton of stuff out there. But what you're gonna notice is that most of those tool stands are made from plywood, and that's fine. Plywood works great for it, however, if you don't have you know, two to three sheets of four by eight foot plywood laying around to build your uh, tool stand, you're gonna have to head over to the lumber yard to purchase it. And what you're gonna find is you know, a three quarter inch thick four by eight foot sheet of even exterior grade plywood is gonna run 30 to 40 bucks. So I had this idea that I would build my tool stand out of two by fours, because two by fours are cheap, in fact, to build this tool stand took about, I think it was five um, eight foot long two by fours and at like three bucks a piece it gets pretty cheap. We're talking, you know, 15, 20 bucks for the uh, two by fours to build it. And what I decided to do was to assemble it using pocket holes. And this gave me a chance to use my new armor tool pocket hole jig. The end result was a stand which is very stable, very sturdy, and I've put it on some three inch casters, uh, swivel casters with brakes, so I can roll it around, hit the brakes, and then use the tools. So uh, later on in this uh, episode, I will uh, give you some information on how you can purchase and download a more detailed description. Uh, it's an assembly manual of how I built this stand. And it'll include a hardware list as well as a cut plan for the 2x4s as well as the uh, plywood top. And you can actually use plywood or I used OSB. Uh, you can also use MDF if you want to. Uh, for me, the goal here was to keep it cheap and keep it structurally sound and uh, usable. So uh, without further ado, let's jump in and build this thing. First, I had to cut all the 2x4s for the support and top frames. The actual size of the stand will be determined by the dimensions of the tools that will be placed on top of the table. It's a good idea to measure those before you commit to a specific size. I used my armor tool pocket hole jig to drill all of the pocket holes into the cut 2x4s in preparation for assembly. The top will be supported at all four corners of the structure with knobs and eye bolts. To accommodate the hardware, I needed to cut slots in the legs and what will eventually become the corners of the top frame. Thank you. 
A one inch diameter Forstner bit was used to drill holes in the parts that the steel flipping pipe will pass through. The pipe I used was slightly larger than the one inch hole I drilled. So I used my oscillating spindle sander to enlarge it just enough for the pipe to fit snugly. The top frame was assembled on top of my Armor Tool 5425 mobile workbench using pocket hole screws. And the sides of the support frame were assembled the same way. A pair of 2x4 cross members were added to connect the sides and complete the support frame. Before finishing the top, I test fit the top frame into the support frame. Next, I cut a sheet of 3 quarter inch thick OSB to serve as the lower shelf. The corners were cut out to fit around the support legs and it was attached with wood screws. The shelf not only provides a place to store stuff, it also adds extra rigidity to the support frame. To make the top, the frame was sandwiched with two same size sheets of 3 quarter inch thick OSB and attached to the frame with wood screws. Before installing the top to the support frame, I measured and marked the location of the mounting holes for the tools I intend to use with this stand. Next, I attached the corner eye bolts into the slots that I had cut earlier for them. The top was now ready to be installed. The easiest way to do this is to set it in place with the eye bolts in the support leg slots. Then it was just a matter of tapping the steel pipe through the support frame and the tabletop. Each eye bolt needs a knob. I could buy four plastic star knobs to be used with this table, but I opted to make my own out of a sheet of 3 quarter inch thick plywood by first drilling a 3 quarter inch diameter recess about a sixteenth of an inch deep with a Forstner bit for each knob. I followed by drilling out the round knobs with a keyhole saw bit. Next, I enlarged the center hole of each knob with a 5 16 inch bit and pressed a quarter 20 T-nut into the sides with the recess.
At each bottom corner of the support frame, I installed a three inch braking swivel caster. The tools I plan to use with this stand were installed with 5 16 inch lag bolts and washers. My belt sander lacked mounting holes in the base so I had to drill them myself. To keep the steel pipe from wandering side to side when I flipped the table, I covered both ends with a pair of scrap 2x4s. To do this, it'll likely be necessary to cut off the ends of the pipe with a hacksaw to make them flush with the side before attaching the 2x4 blocks. To mount my downdraft sanding box on the other side of the table, I used an L-bracket at each corner. And that's how I made this cheap and easy flip top tool stand. If you would like to make one yourself and would like more details, visit eGuitarPlans.com and scroll to the bottom of the page. There you'll find a link to purchase a fully illustrated assembly manual that includes a hardware list and cut plans for the wood with all the needed dimensions. I hope you found this video to be informative. If so, give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you don't already do so. Also, be sure to click the bell icon next to the subscribe button below so you'll be notified by email whenever I post a new video. Of course, if you have any comments or questions, post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend and a great week ahead.